Knowing how to weigh and measure your food accurately is an extremely important thing to know how to do if you're wanting to track your calorie or your macronutrient intake. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dustin Williams, and for the best health, nutrition, and fitness advice, make sure to subscribe to my channel, hit that little notification bell so that you're notified when I post a new video every week. Anything that you ingest, it needs to be weighed and it needs to be measured, especially if you're trying to count your calories or if you're trying to count macros. This can be liquids, this can be solid foods, even some supplements would need to be weighed. And the thing is, is that if you're gonna take the time to track calories or track macronutrients, you wanna make sure that you're doing it accurately. And that's what I'm gonna show you, everything that you need to know about that in this video. The great part about doing this is that you only need one thing in order to do this and to do it accurately. And that is a digital scale. It's the only thing that you're gonna need. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna link below in the description to one on Amazon that you can pick up. They're only about $10, but you can really get them anywhere. You can pick them up at Walmart, local store, uh, or use the link below to pick one. $10 is a pretty good one. They last forever, and I have had mine for years, and I've never even changed the battery out of them. Pretty easy to use. So the first thing that I wanna do is actually go over the scale and explain how it works uh, just in the basics of it and go over the few buttons so that you understand all of the basics of using the scale. So most of these scales are gonna have anywhere between two and three buttons. Of course, you've got your on off switch to turn it on. Then you're gonna have your uh, ZT, which essentially means to clear it. So if you were to sit anything on top of it, and if you wanted to clear it out, you can click this and it goes automatically back to zero weight. Same thing, take this off if I wanted to clear it back to zero, that takes that. The other thing is the units. Right now it's set up in pounds and ounces. From there you've got ounces and from there you've got grams. Now whenever doing any type of weight measurement, I highly recommend that you really only use the ounces and the grams feature. These are the only two that I recommend whenever you're trying to weigh your food and use these scales. Now the reason that I said that I only recommend that you use scales and not measuring cups is because whenever we are weighing and measuring food, in order to be accurate, it's really important that we are weighing by weight and not by volume, as this can be an inaccurate method. And whenever you are just a little bit inaccurate multiple times a day, it tends to add up. So again, going back to if you want to do this accurately, if you're going to take the time to do it, you want to make sure that you're doing it right. So I typically don't use these. I usually use the scale. And I'm going to give you an example and show you why that's the case. So the example that I'm going to use here and explain to you why I always use the scale instead of measuring cups is I've got some oats here. I'm going to use this as an example. So if we look at the back, and I'll show you this here in just a second, it says that a serving size is half a cup dry, which is also 40 grams in weight. So if you take a look at this and you can see it's about half a cup for a serving size and 40 grams in weight is what we're looking at here. So if that was the case, what I'm going to do is sit this here on the scale and turn the scale on. So it's automatically zeroed out. I'm going to hit the unit button a couple of times to make it go over to grams. And I'm going to take out what would be considered about a half a gram, uh, half a cup. So that's a pretty level half cup. It's not overflowing by any means. Pretty good half cup. And if you actually look at the scale, the scale itself is saying that this is 50 grams in weight. So you can see here that it's 50 grams in weight, even though it says that a half cup is only supposed to be 40 grams in weight. So that's a pretty decent increase in calories if you were just doing one serving size. If you did this for two serving sizes or three, it would continue to get worse the more of this you ate. This is why it's really important that we are weighing by the actual weight and not by the volume. Another thing that you wanna pay attention to, and it seems almost silly to mention this, but it's also really easy to overlook this. And that's that you wanna make sure that when you are weighing and measuring, that you're only measuring what you're eating. So let me give you an example here. Let's talk about this apple. So if somebody was to eat an apple, it's not uncommon. Somebody might weigh the apple to see and get an idea of how much it weighs. So they turn the scale on, they turn it to either ounces or grams. I'm gonna go ahead and put grams. And when I sit this on the scale, it currently shows that this apple weighs 240 grams. If you were to put that in there, you would put that you ate 240 grams worth of apple if you put that in your tracker. Now the downside to that is I'm not going to eat the whole core. I'm not gonna eat this, so it's gonna make a difference. So if I use my fancy little apple core slicer here, cut this, knock these off. Now typically I would have a plate here. I just don't happen to have one on me at the moment. But sit the pieces of apple here on top of it because this is what I'm actually going to eat. 
So we've now went from 240 grams down to 214 grams because the core that's left over in here, I'm not gonna be eating. So this is the part that you wanna measure. This is gonna go with pretty much uh, anything else that you put in there. So think about a banana, like you don't wanna weigh the whole banana, you're gonna take the peel off and you're gonna measure just the part of the banana that you're gonna eat. So make sure that that's something that you're considering whenever you're weighing your food. Another thing to consider is whenever it comes to weighing and measuring your liquids. Now here's the thing that I highly recommend is that you do this based on grams, based on the weight. Whenever you put something on the scale and you move the scale over to ounces, it's measuring it in ounces by weight. Now, if you look at whatever you're drinking, if it's milk or orange juice or whatever liquid you're potentially putting in there that contains calories that you're trying to measure, most of the time it's telling you the serving size based on a fluid ounce. And a fluid ounce is based on the volume of what you're drinking. So 12 fluid ounces of orange juice is not gonna be the same as 12 ounces in weight of orange juice. It's going to be different. So anytime that you are drinking something, any type of liquid that contains calories, I highly recommend that you weigh it by grams in order to be accurate. And then when you put it into your tracker, that you are putting that in there as grams so that you know that you're doing it 100% on point. Another question that I get asked a lot is, should you measure your food raw or after you cook it? Now here's the thing, either way is fine and either way can work. My first recommendation is that whichever way you choose to go, be consistent with it. Don't go back and forth in doing it raw and measuring it one time and cooked another time. Make sure that you are being consistent in the way that you choose to measure it either way. From there, my personal recommendation, not a requirement, what I have found easiest for me and typically for most of my clients is to measure it raw. So a couple of different things to think about here. If you were cooking chicken or beef or something like that, that you know that you're gonna to have to cook, when you look at the information on the back, the nutritional information, so if you're using your app to scan it and you're trying to be accurate with that, it's giving you the nutritional information based on it being raw. So the easiest way is if you are cooking five or six ounces of chicken is to weigh out five or six ounces of chicken on the scale and then input that into your tracker as five to six ounces of chicken and whatever it comes out to be, it's still the same. You don't have to worry about reweighing it. The only time that this is going to be an issue that you have to do just a little bit of math, not very much, just a little bit, is if you are someone that cooks in bulk. So if you, on Sunday, you decide to cook all your chicken for the entire week and you have to portion it out from there, this is where you're gonna have to do a little bit of math. So let me give you a little bit of example. So let's say that you're cooking some ground beef and you're making it for the week. And whenever you lay all the ground beef out that you're gonna cook, it is 800 grams worth of beef. All right, so what you would do is you would take that number, that 800 grams of beef, and you would write it down. After you cook it, so once you've cooked it and you've drained it, and what you have left, you're gonna weigh it again. Now I'm just making up numbers here, but if you had 800 raw, after you cooked it, it dropped to 700 grams raw. So you lost 100 grams in weight based on doing this. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take 800 and divide it by 700. When you do that, you're gonna get 1.14. So you're just gonna have to remember that 1.14, and then you will put your meals in the fridge, do whatever you're gonna do with them, freeze them. When you pull the meals back out, however much you take out, so let's say that you decide to take out 300 grams worth of that 700 grams that's left. You would take that 300, the amount you took out, and multiply it by the 1.14. Whenever you multiply that by 1.14, you're gonna get 342. So that would be the number that you would enter into your tracker based on the raw weight. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. It'll make more sense if you actually go through the process. It's not complicated. It'll take you like an extra minute or two to do the math. And then you've got it set for the week if you end up cooking in bulk. So remember, just take the raw weight, divide it into the cooked weight, and then take that number and multiply it by however much you take out for your servings whenever it's already cooked and enter that number into your tracker to make it 100% accurate. Now there are other ways to do it. This is what I found the easiest. My clients seem to like the, the best. This would be the one that I would recommend if you were going to do uh, cook things in bulk. Now this video is all about how to weigh and measure your food whenever you're trying to accurately track calories. But if you need some help or some assistance in figuring out how many calories you should eat in order to get fat loss, I've actually done a video on this topic. I will link to that video down below in the description. You can click that and learn exactly how to come up with those numbers. So at this point, you know how to accurately weigh and measure your food for calorie counting and macronutrient counting. But whenever it comes to creating a nutritional lifestyle, there's more to it than that. So what I've done for you guys is I put together a completely free guide, my yo-yo dieting cure, and I've actually linked to that below in the description. You can click the link, go to the site and download this yo-yo dieting 
cure completely for free, which is really going to help make sure that it puts you on a nutritional lifestyle so that once you lose the weight and you get into the habit that you're able to keep it off and not gain it back. So make sure to check that out completely free down below in the description. Also, if you like this video, I would really appreciate it if you would smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you guys have any questions, make sure to comment down below and let me know. I'd be happy to help out. But otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.